guys, you're watching the Watch Hobbyist channel with me, Wayne, and today I'm going to look at my Bremont U2. Now, Bremont is a watch from uh, a watch brand for me that I've had a few of, but I haven't had one for quite a while. And the reason I haven't had one for a while is because the last watch that I had, I needed a new crystal. It had all scratches to the anti-reflective coating on the top of the crystal, and they offered me, well, they quoted me a huge price to replace the crystal. It was way more than any other brand had ever quoted me, and I was just really surprised. And it actually put me off the brand because I just thought, um, I don't mind owning the watch, you know, and... and um, I expect maintenance costs, but I just didn't want to damage it and then cost myself an absolute fortune down the line. It was, it was silly, really. I mean, I never damage my watches anyway, but at the same time, it just felt like a bit of a kick in the teeth for such a high quote um, for just a crystal. So I didn't go down that route. I sold the watch and I haven't had a Bremont since. This then recently came up. It was very cheap. Um, I nearly missed out on it, but I was lucky to actually catch it in the end and it was just a really good price. I couldn't say no to it and I'm really glad I got it because it reminded me how good Bremont watches actually are. Um, all right, it's dead easy to go into uh, your local shopping center and have a look at all the Rolexes, the Amigas, the Breitlings, all these big, big brands that we've heard of forever. Um, but the Bremont brand is obviously relatively new. Um, I think it's less than 20 years old and the owners of the company are well known for flying planes and things like that. Um, and apparently they crashed in a farmer's field and the, the farmer's surname was Bremont. So for me, I've always found that a bit of a point of contention, if I'm honest. It's like a French name, but yeah, a very, very British brand going on about uh, how British they are with London on the dial, but actually the name is uh, of French derivative sort of thing. It's, it's, for me, if that's the true story, it just seems a bit at odds, but you know, marketing is marketing, whatever. I'm not bothered. The main thing for me is that the, the watch is, um, you know, good enough to own. And in this case, um, the U2 is probably my favorite current model in the Bremont lineup. Um, I really dislike the models of late, I hate to say. Um, I find them, I just don't think that they look how a modern watch should. And I don't personally like the designs. I do, however, like the the older designs. I think they, that's where they nailed it. They didn't need to go down these new routes that they have. And the latest U2 that they've just released is stunning. Um, it's a black case. It has a blackened movement with a sapphire case back. This actually has a solid case back, but um, it's really, really cool. It's, it, the only thing that they have done is taken the day away, which I think is a bit daft. Um, but what they've at least done is kept the price to the same. So you get this really unique looking watch um, with no day, but at the same price at least as the rest of the U2 range. So they've done well there, I think. Um, but what I like about this watch is it's just so simple. Now, for some people, it will be too simple. But for me, I think if you want a watch that is legible and functional, and I do think the price is quite high for what it is, but at the same time in 2018, it's actually not a terribly unreasonable price. I think it's hard to beat this watch, but not everybody will jump straight to Bremont watches, of course. There are plenty of other brands that they probably look at first. Um, however, when you break this watch down, first of all, you have this hardened case, so it's much harder to scratch the case than on most of the watches. Have an anti-reflective crystal, as I've seen in the past, that's not always a great thing, but in this case, when it's not scratched, it's a very good thing. It's a lot less reflective than most of the crystals would be. Um, the crystal does have a dome to it as well, which doesn't help with reflections, but it does at least... Um, you know, give it a bit more character and I'm sure it helps with things like water resistance as well, probably. Um, the case itself, what's really unusual about it is that, um, unfortunately I've not got another watch to hand, but I'd say that, you know, like this caliper here, so that's silver. Um, and hopefully you can see that the case of the Bremont U2 is incredibly dark. Um, it looks almost like titanium, but it's steel. And that's part of the hardening process that sort of gives it that color, it gives it more of a gray look, a very matte gray. And it looks fantastic. It's a really unique look. It looks brilliant. Um, so I've always been a fan of that. 
the dial itself, all the text and everything that they've got on there is perfectly proportioned. Um, the logo is perfectly sized. The little bit of writing at the bottom, which says anti-shock and automatic, you know, it's not in your face at all. Uh, the date and the date are a great size. You can really read those really, really easily. Um, and then you have the luminescence around the dial. Now, um, on that latest model, uh, that I was telling you about before, the black one. Unfortunately, we've gone for the faux loom look, and I don't think it really, you know, suits the watch that well. But in this one, we just have sort of standard green loom. It's very, very powerful. Um, I wish it had those numerals going all the way around. I really like it when they do Arabics all the way around that are fully luminescent. Um, but in this case, we don't have that. We just have the 12, 6, and 9. Um, the 3 o'clock is, of course, taken up by the day and date. Um, but the matte dial really helps with legibility. It's so, so easy to read the time. Then we move on to sort of what's inside the watch. So you end up where you've got this ETA or ETA movement. Um, some people are going to find fault with that. For me personally, I don't find it's too bad, but I think for the price that they are charging for this watch, I would expect to see an in-house movement now. Um, you've got Tudor at sometimes half the price with in-house movements. Um, if you really want to go in-house, look at Seiko. You know, they're, they're stupid cheap and they're in-house, basically. Um, it's one of these things that, you know, I think even if it's not from a functional standpoint, it's from a marketing standpoint, everybody expects this in-house scenario going on. Um, but there are plenty of benefits, like I say, to having the sort of outsource movement. You can take it to pretty much any watchmaker you want. Um, you know, it's not going to be too hard to service down the line and it makes things easier and probably cheaper to have it like this. But this is an expensive watch. This is around about, I think it's £3,895 retail. Um, it's not unknown to find discounts on these watches in terms of sales and things like that. Um, so do look around if you are buying one. Um, but they do seem to be more popular from my experience, if you look towards the opposite side of the pond, so in America, um, you guys over there seem to like these watches, and I totally get why. Um, obviously, the U2 is named after the spy plane, uh, so if you're into any kind of aviation, you'll know about the U2 bomber, um, which is, well, not bomber, U2 spy plane, sorry, um, that is a incredibly unusual aircraft. It has the one of the longest wingspans in aviation, and it's a plane that's been around since something like the 1950s and is still going now. Um, the guys wear oxygen masks that fly them. Um, it's a really interesting plane, and of course, the marketing uh, that you see with this watch, you see these watches up there at 60, 70,000 feet on the wrists of these guys flying the planes, and it's really interesting. Um, I'm not sure that the U2 is in any way specifically designed, this watch is specifically designed in any way to, to handle those uh, conditions. I don't know if it's the case or not, if you couldn't take another watch up there. Um, I have seen pictures of Speedmasters up in the same planes on forums, um, so therefore I'm not sure how much um, you know this actually means towards whether the, the watch would work any better than another watch in terms of accuracy or whatever. Um, but it's certainly very anti-magnetic and anti-shock resistant, um, so it's very durable. And what's nice about this model is I think it's I think it's a better option than the MB2. So the um, the Bremont MB2 is basically a watch that's in the same case and it has very similar look to it. It has the two crowns, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, but it also has a few more, in my opinion, gimmicks. Um, and one of the main ones is if you look to the second hand now on here, we just have an arrow very normal looks pretty plain and it and it's fine i think it looks really good on the watch actually it's got a red arrow to it um looks good um the bremont mb2 at the end of this uh, second hand so the the latter the uh, sort of latter end of it that has like a loop and the loop is to resemble what you would pull if you're in an ejector seat um I find that a bit gimmicky, but I do also understand that it has grounding that the MB1, or just the MB basically, um, that's the watch that Bremen also supply to people that have pulled an ejector seat. So people that have been in flight, had to eject, 
they get the privilege, as long as they made it to the ground safely, that they get to then own one of these MB watches. Um, and it has slightly different look to it. I've never actually seen one because they are obviously so rare. There's not that many people in the world that have ejected from a, um, a an ejector seat, a Martin Baker ejector seat. So um, I would imagine, I think, well, I think I heard a number of around 700 people, something like that, which was surprised me it was even that many, but apparently that's around the number. Um, so I don't like the MB2 because it's like you're buying the MB1 one but you haven't ejected so for me like i just totally discount that model i know it's probably wrong to say i probably some people watching this will have that and they love that watch and that's totally fair but for me it just doesn't work as a watch the u2 however when they released the u2 i was instantly in love with it the simplicity of it the durability of it just everything about it the the color of the case the day and the date um, the easy to read time at day, night, whenever with all the luminescence going on. It just makes so much sense as a daily watch, this watch. And then we move on to the crowns. So the crowns are obviously uh, quite a big feature of the design of this watch. The top crown is how you set the time and everything and the bottom crown actually rotates in, in a bezel. Now the top crown is what I'll talk about first. So they're both knurled, so they have like this knurled finish to them and uh, on one of them you have the Bremont logo at the top and then on this one it looks more like a target something like that I don't know what it's supposed to be but um, maybe it is supposed to be a target sort of scenario um, this one basically isn't neither of them are screw down crowns um, so the watch is 100 meters water resistant officially um, but it doesn't have a screw down crown so it's not a diver's watch anything like that that would um, it's just sort of a, a, a normal day-to-day -day watch um, so you would just literally without unscrewing it or anything you can just wind it even when it's in its first position in towards the case that will manually wind the movement inside the watch of course it's an automatic so you're going to wear it it's probably um, going to wind itself enough throughout the day to, to wear it anyway but if you need to give it that bit extra of a, or a bit of a boost if you haven't worn it for a few days you'll just wind it from there um, you can then pull it to the first position which is only about a millimeter out and then you can basically change the date. So if you move it in a clockwise position, then you're going to get it to uh, the date itself. And then if you move it the other way in an anti-clockwise, we get the day. Now, the day in this case on this model, and I'm not sure if it's all models, is uh, English and then it goes to French. So English, French, and so on. And basically that's how you know that's how it works um so again another french relatable thing i don't know if that's actually um because of the bremont name or if it's just because it's a popular uh, language in which people buy these watches or a popular country or whatever um the french speaking world is pretty big so maybe that's like a, a, another market for them or whatever um and then if we pull the crown out further it now hacks the seconds, so you can see the seconds hand is actually stopped moving completely, and now we can actually set the time. Um, setting the time is not the most comfortable experience. I wouldn't say you're really going to be able to do it too easy actually on the wrist, and um, because of the angle and the size of the uh, crown, you sort of have to get your finger um, somewhere near the the lug here, and it just doesn't. It doesn't quite feel as if it as natural as if it was like a three o'clock crown, um, but it's still obviously very easy to set time. It's just that uh, I just wanted to point that out. You'll then push the crown back in completely to the case, and the, the movement carries on. Now this crown here at around about the four o'clock mark, that is for the internal bezel. So you can actually time up to sixty minutes on this bezel inside the watch. Um, it's not anything that you can do with your fingers outside. It's all inside. Uh, underneath the crystal and basically it goes either way it's bi-directional so it has a click so each detent in the uh, as you move it has a click and it makes sort of a loud enough noise that you know exactly when and it gives you like a feedback through the crown as well so um, it's not smooth it does have sort of indentations around the around the bezel and every time you turn it you know you've hit another indentation um, the only thing I do find is that 
this is not a great way to um, have a stable bezel. So, for example, if you have an external bezel, the idea is that, for, for example, say a diver's watch, it will only go one way around. It's unidirectional, and if you knock it, it can only speed up time. It can't slow down time. So uh, the last thing a diver would want underwater is um, for the time to slow down, and they think they've got more air than they actually have, and then that causes all sorts of issues that we would obviously know. Um, this isn't a diver's watch, so of course that's fine, but you could be timing something quite important with it and as you wear it, it can get knocked here and there. And the problem is because it's bi-directional, of course, that means that you won't know whether you've gone faster, slower or anything like that. Um, and I have plenty of times worn this watch and had previous models like it and I have knocked the little internal bezel and, it, and I found that the only reason I've known I've done that is because most of the time I'll have it sat at 12 and I'll look at my watch and occasionally it's sometimes sort of a couple of minutes further down or whatever um, and I'll know that I've inadvertently knocked it. So I think there could be a bit more resistance on this crown. Um, it does seem like it's a bit too easy to move and that's a shame because, you know, apart from that, Everything else is absolutely perfect on this watch. It's one of the greatest watches um, for around its price point. But like I say, unfortunately, I do feel that the price is quite high, but then it's a nice alternative to so many other watches. Now, I just want to give you the measurements of the watch. I always do that. Uh, diameter wise, we are looking at, I can actually get a really accurate diameter on this watch because of where the crowns are. 40 under 43 millimeter diameter so it is classed as 43 in the uh, in the paperwork but actually it's under 43 uh, so that's nice um, then we have the actual length now um, the lugs are quite unusual on this watch in the way that they sort of fall away from the strap um, but you can see here that the length is actually under 40 under 50 millimeters but if we look at the actual point that meets um, meets the wrist it's actually only around about 46 millimeters so a really unusual case to measure because it has so many angles going on um, and then if we look at the height now this is to the sort of center of the domed crystal it's around about 14 and a half millimeters if I just do the actual case itself um, then we are getting around about 12 and a half to 13 something like that so um you know in terms of dimensions it wears really well now i have a 6.75 inch wrist i think it is and this is how the watch actually wears on said wrist um so actually i find it's more than fine in the way that it wears i find it very very comfortable this is actually on a rubber strap that came with the watch um you get a couple of straps i think when you buy these and there are an awful lot of straps to choose from on the website as well they're not the cheapest straps but they are uh, available as accessories on the website and i'm sure um, if you were buying through a dealer they may be able to chuck something in as well um, if you ask nicely sort of thing it's that type of brand that doesn't really have any sort of major restrictions like some others so you might be able to get away with like little bits like that and um, it's always worth asking and don't feel like you're being cheap in doing so it's it's you know you it's nice to get a little bit extra for your money so um that's how the watch wears i find it quite sort of slim i don't find it too thick on the wrist and I find it sort of overhangs my wrist just ever so slightly in terms of the way it looks. But actually, theoretically, my wrist is shorter than this watch, so it's probably just an optical illusion. Um, but it is a comfortable watch, and especially on this rubber strap, it's actually a really good rubber strap. It's quite uh, relatively flexible, although it's quite thick, but it is a flexible rubber, and it has the two strap keepers. Um, which are going to hold it nicely in place. So I hope you've enjoyed that little look at the Bremont U2. And if you did, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, please make sure you hit that bell icon so you know when I'm going to bring more videos out. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And two thumbs down if you didn't like it, please. Um, also, you're welcome to comment on the video below. And also, um, if you are on Instagram, you can look at, at Watch Hobbyist and you will be able to see all my latest watches on there and what's probably going to come to the channel soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.